Welcome to Fan Room Live. I am your host, Chanel Omari, and I know you're so excited to meet the one and only D.L. Hewley. He has his new book out, Surrender, White People, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to meet and greet him. You guys are going to get to ask your questions. We are so excited. So without further ado, please welcome comedian, radio host, entertainer, D.L. Hewley. <laughs> Give a round of applause. Yes, DL. Welcome to Fan Room, DL. So, how are you? First of all, first and foremost, thank you so much for doing this with us here at Fan Room Live. And how are you feeling since you know you've had COVID? Right. How well, I feel a lot, I feel a lot better. You know, I'm so I'm, I'm negative now, but I think you know uh, it is taking a while to get back to. You know, 100%, but I feel a, a lot better. So, you know, I'm back to work. I'm ready to go back on the road. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about, like, you're saying you're negative. Um, were there any side effects uh, that you had afterwards or that you're feeling now that scares well, you or concerns you? Well, I, when, I'm not really scared or concerned. I mean, I, 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 when I'm, I'm exercising every day, I'm you know, playing golf three days a week. So uh, I'm going to work. So my wife's like, if you're ready, if you can play golf, you <laughs> you can go back to work. Uh, but uh, you know, I have to see a cardiologist because, you know, like I think one of the things that is happening with COVID is that uh, they're trying to make sure it doesn't do damage to other organs and they want to take a look at my heart, but I'm, yeah, I'm running five, six miles, uh, five days a week and working out. So I feel fine. But um, I'm not, let's, let's just put it like this. I'm not, I don't feel like a hundred percent like myself. Right. And the after effects, like you said, the heart now, does that have to do with the after right. effects? Well, we'll see. I, I, you know, I didn't have any sign, any, um, any, um, any symptoms from, um, the COVID to speak. I didn't have a cough or sore throat or I didn't have, I didn't lose my the, uh, taste or, or, um, anything like that. But, uh, apparently um, even not having those symptoms didn't mean I couldn't infect anybody else and didn't mean it wasn't doing potential damage to the people around me. So um, we're just making sure that everything's all right and we get ready to go back at it. Right. Um, thank God you're well, because we all love yeah. you. We were very worried. Say, I say, was, right? We were very worried for a second because, I mean, you were <laughs> on stage doing comedy, you know, coming from a comedic background. You've been doing comedy, you know, forever. And then right. you're on stage. You're finally doing it right before COVID. And so were there symptoms leading up to that when you were on stage? And then well, you know, I, was I, that a shock to collapse? Like when I, when I, I knew that I was going to, I could feel my blood pressure uh, dropping. So I knew that something was going on and uh, I could feel that. And, you know, you ever like it felt the sensation I felt was like that I needed to eat something real quickly. And um, so um, I felt that. And then um, uh then after that, I was in the hospital. <laughs> so then, I, then I felt uh, 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 you know, uh, tests being run. But I, I, I have a um, a whole different, uh, 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 you know, vantage point, a whole different idea of the pandemic than I did before. Right. So because you've actually experienced it. Um, well, yeah, and, and a yeah, lot of people. A, did, a lot of people. My, my, you know, my son got it, and my. Um, Everybody at the radio station that I was at got with got it, and everybody got it except my daughter, who wore a mask all the time. Um, because wow. you know her her uh, uh, her roommate has a uh, a situation where she can't be exposed to you know she can't have any she has a you know those those complications that were uh, potentially those complications that we were talking about. So the only one who didn't get it was her. Wow, God bless that. Thank God. So now you're all together as a family, though, really right. taking precaution and really kind right. of into this together. Right. And uh, now TMZ broke the news first. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel that you are now in the hospital? You didn't even break the news to your friends and right. your family yet. Right. But now your friends and your family are finding out for the first time from the media. Did you know? How did that just you know, with your mental health and everything like well, that? I you know. Actually, uh, the, the how I knew. What was going on is I was in the hospital getting tests ran, and Vlad called me. DJ Vlad called and asked, "Are you all right?" I'm like, "How do you know?" <laughs> like, so he was the first one to call me. And right. then, um, 
DJ Vlad called me. And then a little later on, so I, I still had no, you know, scope of idea what was going on. And then later on, a nurse came in and she was like, is this you? And she had her phone. So then I, then I was like, oh, okay, well, this is, this is out there because, you know, I, I just, I, did, I didn't know. Now, I, I didn't have any idea of the speed they would have traveled. So I, I, and I had, hadn't actually ever seen um, the uh, video until I was actually doing an interview uh, with Harvey and, and, and TMZ promoting my last book. And then I finally saw the video. I, that would have scared me too if I'd have saw it. So, um, but I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't kind of aware of what was going on at that at the time, and you know what people. Uh, you know how how it's playing out. The positive news is that at least you know you're so loved. That's All right. Probably, right. That's probably what you're like. Well, I'm loved. <laughs> the other news is if you want to promote a book, pass out on stage in Nashville. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but that's funny. If you want a number one bestseller, blackout in Nashville on stage. I'm telling you, the best. It's better than any planet story could ever be. Oh, what amazing! <laughs> well, let's talk about your book now. On on mm -hmm. that note, we're talking about your book, um, "Surrender White People." I love right. the title. Talk to us. It's coming in the right time too, because now, not only with COVID, the protests, fighting for injustice. This, you sure. Know, a black man or woman in America, very important uh, topic to fight for right now, all the time, but also especially right. right now. Talk to us about why this book and you know well, the inspiration. Interesting. I started writing this book uh, about eighteen months ago, and um, matter of fact, it was supposed to come out. Uh, it came out on June thirtieth, but it was supposed to come out uh, in July. But they pushed it up the book. But it, the book had always been been about you know th this notion. Uh, uh, that privilege didn't exist, or some people held the notion that privilege didn't exist and that everybody had a fair. And so we were trying to, in, in a humorous, ironic way, way, talk about all the things that kind of fly in the face of that of that attitude in housing and banking, even the medical profession. But we tried to do it in a way where we presented history and it was just a very funny take on it. So, we, we, you know, I never forget that I'm there to make people laugh, but I think truth is, I, I think, the, the best punch the setup for a joke is 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 the truth and um so but so I, surrendering white people was about people surrendering their privileges um the 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 notion of privilege now all of us have an idea that we're entitled to certain things all of us can hold ideas of, of you know I'm, I deserve this or I deserve that but I think we have a nation that's built on it and then we try to pretend as if it didn't exist and so the book was kind of about that. What I didn't anticipate was that, um, and, I, and I think partially due to the pandemic, the, the, you got to remember the world uh, was back. The world was uh, basically um, shut, out, shut down at one time. So everybody, there were fewer distractions, nothing to kind of take our minds. And people got to really see what was going on. And I think it was a very sobering look. And once they saw it, I think they couldn't unsee it. And I think it spurred them to action. So I didn't anticipate that in the book, but all the kind of, the kind of things leading up to it weren't, weren't a shock. like, like there've been uh, almost 200 riots in this country based on race. So that wasn't particularly surprising. It was just uh, the reaction to it this time that was. I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about um, Kanye West. You know, yeah. uh, mental health is a big deal, right. uh, especially in the black community. Uh, you talk about it in your book. What are your thoughts about what's been going on with him in the public eye? Uh, I, I think I've been I've been pretty clear. I think that Kanye yeah. West and mental illness is a, mm -hmm. a, a big a big uh, problem in our community. It's primarily a problem because of lack of access and lack of trust. Um, it, there's, there's a certain degree of mistrust between I think our community and, and the medical profession and our community in general, where we just just don't trust people. Where the the things that have been attributed to us like strength is suffering alone and working your way through it. And we think we can pray everything away. So I do understand uh, how devastating it has been to our community. But I, I think, uh, I think Kanye West, they, they, there is no doubt that he suffers from some level of mental illness, but uh, it, it isn't why he's misogynistic. It isn't why he's disrespectful to, uh, to our history. It isn't like Kanye West, you don't have to be mentally ill to put an asterisk on slavery and he consistently does it, whether it's Harriet Tubman, uh, when he denigrated her or where, whether he's talking about slaves, he's not so mentally ill that he'll talk about any other group of people. He talks about people that he knows and get away with. And then he's not so ill that he is trying to be a disruptor in the political form. 
He's not so ill that he can't. He he he, he took five million dollars in in the PPP payments. So he he seems to be conveniently ill when it serves his purposes. And I think um, he uh, to me, Kanye West is exactly like uh, Donald Trump. So it makes sense that they're uh, attracted to one another. Um, they are both amoral. They're both demigods. Too. But it, but you know it's funny. Now generally when you talk like when you say the things he does. You don't live in Wyoming on a ra sprawling ranch. You live under an underpass. Uh, and you walk around with signs that say, Jesus is coming, repent. And people don't pray for you. They don't pray for you. I, it, when you pray for somebody, you pray that they get help. They get access to help. He has the access and the wherewithal to help himself. So whatever he's going through, he can, he can mitigate a great deal of it by accessing the help that is so readily available. As many times as people pray for Kanye, and I think we should as human beings pray for each other, pray for people who can help. This man, they, 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 they are denigrated for who they are. He's rewarded. He, a lot of them were broken by what happened to him in their life, and I'm sure he's gone through tragedy too. We don't pray for them. He even, he, he, he's rewarded for, for acting like they act. They even, he even made money designing clothes to look like homeless people, and Americans bought it for hundreds of dollars. So. If we, while we're praying for people that can help themselves, let's save a little prayer for people that can't. Amen to that. Let's at, talk about uh, why was this your favorite book? Because you've written many books. Um, because this was the one where I really felt, uh, and I and I had no idea what would happen, uh, you know, would transpire later. But it was it was an opportunity to have. Uh, conversations that make people so uncomfortable they stop having them uh, um, you know, it was an opportunity to say some things and, and share some things um, that that, that generally um, fall on deaf ears because it's hard to hear uh, and hard to to realize and I think um, I think that one of the reasons that that um, this time happened is because there were so many uh, distractions that were mitigated and so uh, people's uh, focus like you can only watch uh, Tiger King so many times <laughs> you could only take so many walks and then all of a sudden you kind of faced with uh, other options and um, um, I didn't I was I'm certainly not prophetic but I I was um, writing a book for a conversation I hoped we would have or get to have and that it, and I remembered that you know obviously some of these things are very uncomfortable, but but to have a, a captive audience was was something I didn't count on. But I'm I wrote a book that I hope people would listen to, and they would make them uncomfortable, but, but not so uncomfortable they stop. Great, amazing. And where can we get the book now? On uh, Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble. If you're still going, I want those people going out. You know what I mean? You mask up and go out, but but Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Uh, you could get uh, the audio book I think on iTunes. So. Um, it depends on what incarnation you want to kind of consume. It. Thank you, Fan Thank Room you. Live, to all the fans for supporting us. You guys can book DL and your favorite celebrities on fanroomlive.com right now for more sessions. You can find DL's book all and every at every bookstore online, Amazon. Make sure you get it now. You will love it. You will not be able to put it down. And make sure you where can they follow you, DL? Uh, at Real DL Hughley on all like all anchor that, that Twitter. Uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram, Real D.L. Hughley. The real Not the fan. Right. The Real D.L. Hughley. It's been an honor, yeah. a pleasure. You're a legend. You're an icon. We love you. And we're rooting for you. We can't wait to see you back on tour, virtual. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Thank you we're very listening. much. We're listening. Thank, Thank you, you so much, guys. Thank you.